My name's Nat Zorek. Um, uh, I am basically most of the handheld city these days. I uh, work with a few partners in Indiana, a few partners in St. Louis. And so um, my interest in real estate, my interest in, uh, well, being a civic-minded person in Chicago is basically uh, coming from having come at this from a sort of bizarre direction. I didn't get an MBA. I studied art history in college and basically got out of college and figured, well, I'm, I'm, I'm now in St. Louis, and i got to figure out what I'm, what I'm doing in St. Louis. And there are a lot of these abandoned buildings that are hanging out. And so uh, what are we going to do to solve that issue? So I, I started, um, I, I've, I've had a long-standing appreciation for the worlds of finance and uh, you know, urban development, architecture, all these things. So I wanted to think about a way that I could get involved in sort of addressing the issues of, of, of the uh, capital deficits in these neighborhoods that are really struggling and cities that are really struggling, and also addressing the issues of the actual like architectural process of renovating houses. Um, so this is called, you cannot see the rest of it, but it's called I think shuffling. I broke your um, yeah. yeah, so the presentation is called shuffling the deck, deck because the idea is, you know, like, think of like a deck in financial terms of uh, you know, your, your, your stock orders that are coming in, and the idea is that you're, um, you know, for this, <laughs> the idea of the fundrise is that it's basically this sort of disruptive process, it's this idea of disruptive innovation, and um, the whole thing is figuring out how to do something with all these great technological systems that we have going. Um, so basically, my role, um, I have worked as a consultant in Indiana um, doing housing development for a partnership, a big private equity partnership that basically buys up houses and works to address the issue of tax foreclosure and expropriation. Um, it's sort of a weird world because it's this bizarre intersection of the informal and the formal. Uh, it's very much like sort of orthodox finance guys were involved in it, but the way they approach the issue is which is building this sort of building this system that's really um, it's really intriguing because it's it sort of capitalizes on all these weird things that are going on. This process of tax foreclosure, which has the potential to be very unequitable and unfair. Can you explain what tax foreclosure is? Tax foreclosure is like, so there's bank foreclosure, which is where you don't pay your mortgage. And tax foreclosure is similar to that, but in a bank foreclosure, the bank is basically trying to recoup its losses and avoid losing all the money that they lent for this project, uh, which in Gary, Indiana, is a huge problem because they were selling houses 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008 for like sixty and seventy thousand dollars that are now selling at tax foreclosure sales for like three hundred dollars. And so you can you can imagine that it's sort of a it's sort of a mess up um, like the way the the way the system has has evolved. Um, tax foreclosure is basically you don't pay your taxes and then your your house gets sold at you know sheriff sale or they, they have commissioner sales they're called. Um, so basically changing gears for one for one moment um, what, what is Fundrise? So we, we heard about Am Kim Wan, what Fundrise is. And basically, the uh, how I had gotten connected with them is that I was working on this project as part of the Handbuilt City, which ended up just sort of being a pilot for, like, can we do this? And I was thinking, well, I'm not going to get a bank to lend me a quarter million dollars. Um, because basically, uh, my experience with bankers has basically been that uh, you go in and you say, here's a proposal. Here are all my, my tax returns for the past you know 50,000 years. Uh, here's you know my mother's maiden name, you know, and, and you give them all this information, and you say, well, that's that's very interesting, and I I, I really like your project. It sounds really great. We'd love to lend in these inner city neighborhoods, and I just I need more information. And over the course of doing urban development work, um, I've learned that I need more information is usually slang for please get the hell out of my office. <laughs> so um, I, I started thinking about this. I was thinking, well, certainly if I can't get can we get the lights one? if I can't get uh, a quarter million dollars from from one institution. Can probably get a thousand dollars for 250 people. Um, Let me know if I should move forward on this one. Yeah, you can actually you can move forward now. And so the idea is basically this idea. You know, it's a whole idea of crowdfunding. If you if you get if you go back in time, you watch these cycles of sort of what I call um, you no know, back one. Sorry. Okay. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I call them cycles of capital innovation, which is basically like every couple of decades something gets massively reorganized in the way we think about financial markets. It's like whether it's mergers and acquisitions or leverage buyouts and all these things. Um, you know, like Richard Gere and Pretty Woman, you know, like, am I, am I that? Am I too old? Um, so, great film. 
But the idea is that you basically like capitalizing on this 1980s trend of like borrowing large amounts of money and then buying these companies and selling them off. Somehow that's a job. Um, so in this case, crowdfunding. Uh, Fundrise, uh, Ben and Dan Miller were basically like, okay, we have this uh, real estate development firm and we're tired of working with these private equity investors because if you've ever worked with big money private equity investors, they're it can be difficult to work with. Uh, so, so they basically said, well, we probably have enough sort of social affinity, social capital between all the people we work with, that we're going to figure out this way to get set up to crowdfund, crowdsource the, the investment process. And how that looks in, in like very technical terms is that they basically went to the SEC and said, hey, we like this Regulation A offering. We want to figure out a way that we can get unaccredited investors to invest money on our projects. Uh, the process of actually filing for a Regulation A offering is like, uh, it's like it takes like weeks and weeks of people who like go to school for this stuff, and so it's not very easy to do. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a legal vehicle through which you can accept money from regular people, as opposed to from. Uh, yeah, well, typically, it's not regular people is the problem, um, and a lot of the crowdfunding stuff that's happening now, like we talk about the Jobs Act and all this stuff, and people say that's a, a huge step forward for. Um, for, for investment and finance, but it's really a matter of basically getting accredited investors to invest larger amounts of money. So it's not really crowdfunding, it's sort of a reorganization of the stock market. And in this case, we're not using accredited investors, we're using everyone in this room, for example. Um, the idea is, you can advance one more. <coughs> um, so, so the idea is that we're, we're taking these uh, we're taking just relationships that we have with individuals and using those as sort of the starting points for capital. Um, my interest in thinking about this was also the fact that I worked in this private equity world with guys who would basically say, hey Mark, I got a good deal for you. Can you cut me a check for $350,000? I'll pick it up tomorrow. And then like the sort of implications that that has for, for how people think about like things like risk assessment. Um, instead of having your risk all in one place from that one person who's going to like seriously come to your house and break kneecaps if you don't pay this money, you know you're spreading out the risk over over a larger pool of people. And so where this comes into the context of uh, urban urban development, we're thinking about you know we think about tech and we think about what tech can do for our cities. And I came up here from St. Louis, where they have this idea of like a, a tech startup on every corner. And it's this idea of like we can dump all this investment money into these corporations or these small companies and startups that are then going to make apps and they're going to change the world. But a lot of times what this amounts to is what I call this like one-way street of capital, which is um, sort of the idea that we're we're creating we're creating platforms like Kickstarter. They're really great at funding small projects, but the problem with them is that they're funding small projects and siphoning off a massive amount of capital over the course of doing so. Um, and you know this comes from how we think about seed funding, venture capital, all this stuff. Where basically Kickstarter was basically started in 2009, I think, for like something like 10 million dollars in seed funding. And so they have to make that 10 million dollars back, and then they have to make an additional 10 or 20 million dollars on top of that. So they're saying we're going to basically siphon off something like 10 or 12 percent from every transaction when we include processing fees and all this stuff. So Fundrise is, is, is a lot simpler because going directly from a bank account transaction, taking money out of your bank account, they're using Something like one to three percent of every transaction. And this is because they've simplified the regulatory process. Um, then the question becomes, how do you convince people that this is different from Kickstarter? You're not donating ten dollars to help someone record an album. You're investing hundreds or thousands of dollars to rebuild a neighborhood. Um, you can advance more. Um, basically, I mentioned this whole thing about the three hundred thousand dollars versus the. 301, this is my great graphic design skills at work. Um, so, so the, you know, there are a lot of problems with this. The idea of risk mitigation, you know, there's been a lot of criticism of Fundrise, or there was originally, because people said, like, well, you know, like the sort of orthodox investment uh, professionals basically were like, well, you can't invest your money in this because it's going to go from very liquid to very illiquid, which basically means that if you think about product, you know, you have cash in your pocket right now, you could go to 7-Eleven, you could buy a monthly membership at 1871, or you could buy a house. Um, if you go to 7-Eleven and you buy, like, shaving cream, Coke, whatever, like, you can use those products. But if you buy a house, you know, but if you're not living in that product, or living in that house, or using that product, 
the point is that it, you, know, you can't just take that house and then just like hand it over to somebody else. Um, so that's that's the idea of liquidity, like what you can use a, use money or capital for. Um, <laughs> The idea here is that by decentralizing this process of investment, you're achieving, you know, let's say, crowds and clouds. Um, the cloud is the idea if you drop your iPhone in the toilet, it's OK, because all your data is going to be backed up on the internet. Um, in this case, it's basically, I see it the same way. It's like saying you're spreading out your, you're spreading out your risk, you're spreading out all your, your capital, and therefore social capital over all the, this big network of people. Um, play nicely with others. I, I had a conversation with a guy this morning who's interested in figuring out a way to connect with connect Fundrise with some Chicago CBCs and basically, uh, basically his idea that was saying we could expedite the terrible permitting processes for building new construction and doing development in the city of Chicago by saying, look, we've got this block on board with it, so like we have to do it now, as opposed to saying, well, you got to go through these like months and months of meetings and then you're still not going to get your permit. Um, you can go next. So I've sort of jumped around a little bit, but um, the idea here we have 122 members.